What's up guys, hope you're all doing good. Today we're reacting to a video by Diane Jennings, 10 lies Europeans believe about American people. So we're gonna listen to these lies, see if we've heard of them, see if we believe them, or if we ever believe them at any point in our life. If you do enjoy the videos, make sure you click that subscribe button. Um, any public subscribers, you will pop up down below if you're one of the most recent ones. So, you know, hit the subscribe button, see if you pop up on the list. Lie number one, Hollywood is a beautiful place. Now, when I was young, I might have believed this one, but as I've grown older, I'm I'm pretty aware that it's not a dirty place, but I, there's it's a place where people go to make it, and the vast majority of them fail. I believe it's got a lot of homelessness and stuff, but I don't know. Let's see what she has to say. See, the first lie that I was told was that Hollywood is full of shiny things, and celebrities are just everywhere. I'm just, I'm gonna say it. Hollywood itself is kind of a kip. Kind of a what? I don't even get her slang. She's she sounds Irish. Wow, she really went there. Ooh. When I was there, I may have seen some celebrities, but they were keeping really low-key and had baseball caps on, so they were very hard to spot. And Hollywood, as I said, is not that shiny and wonderful. The Hollywood sign itself is, I'll be honest, it's kind of a letdown. I guess I pictured Beverly Hills when I thought of Hollywood, but no. The next slide... Beverly Hills just reminds me of the Fresh Prince of Bella. <laughs> um, what could I say on this? I I'm not under the impression that I'm going to go to Hollywood and see Leonardo DiCaprio just like bopping about there. You know what I mean? It's like people who think if you're from England, you know who the queen is. Like, come on now. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's live in the real world. What Europeans are told about America is that it's just full of extremes. And don't get me wrong, it is, but it's not just extremes. Our perception through the media is that Americans are either really fat or really fit. They're either total jocks or nerds. Stereotypes from movies. And like I said, don't get me wrong, those stereotypes exist for a reason. However, the majority of people are not extremes. They're just regular, in-between people with thoughts and feelings that vary and are nuanced. The next one... Again, with this one, I wouldn't expect to go to America and everyone's just walking around fat. You know, <laughs> yeah, I know I know you guys have like a problem with obesity, as does England. But I wouldn't be expecting that. But the comment about being extreme... I do have a perception about America that everything that you do, you do go to extreme lengths in doing it, aka Halloween, Christmas, Thanksgiving, just even like sports events. It's all like extravagant, massive, boom, 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 in your face. That's the perception I have when I think of America being extreme in, in that regard more, which I don't think is a bad thing either. Next the one. Europeans are told about America is that you just quit your jobs whenever you want to. And that's, again, from TV shows and films. I've never heard this one. Never in my life I've heard this one. I've heard that you guys don't take any vacation and you work too hard. So probably the opposite. People just go, I quit when they're unhappy or having a bad day. Never You're heard this fired. one. fired. I quit. You're fired. Marshall. I quit. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> Bye, I already quit. Additionally, we think from the same sources that you can just go, you're fired out of the blue, and there's no repercussions for that. In fact, a lot of times contracts are in place and stuff. And I mean, we literally have a show in England called The Apprentice, where Alan Sugar, at the end of every, every episode, will go, you're fired. So if anything, that, that leads more to us than you guys. It doesn't work like that in the real <laughs> world. On The Apprentice, they do do the you're fired. But there we go. a specific place. The See? next lie See? that you are told about... Everyone is obsessed with celebrities. I think you guys are more obsessed than the most countries with celebrities, if I'm being honest. Do I think everyone is obsessed with celebrities? Of course not. America, of course, I don't think everyone is. is. That everybody in America is obsessed with celebrities, whereas actually the truth couldn't be farther from that. Okay. Okay, so in Europe, a lot of our celebrities come from America. So we naturally presume that everybody is completely obsessed with celebrities within America. In actual fact, most people just kind of see their lives and what goes on behind the scenes as a little bit of entertainment, just like we do in Europe. One thing I will say is kind of odd as a European always when I go to America is seeing on your mainstream news the focus on celebrities within actual serious news programs. We don't really have that as much in Europe. I know in the UK they focus a lot on royalty. Find way for the loser! But you don't <laughs> tend to see people talking about celebs on news shows as much in Europe. The next... Okay, yeah, that one, 
I guess she's kind of right in a way. It's not really on our news about celebrities. That's say for like gossip magazines, the internet. Most people get the the news from the internet these days, so maybe it is on the news. Did, would you would you guys cast the the royal royal family as celebrities? I don't think I would. I don't care about celebrities, man. My celebrities are sports people. They're they're celebrities to me. <laughs> they're the people I'd want to see out and about. Lie. Okay, and this might just be a me thing, but the next lie that I believed about America before I went to America, and I actually think you're going to probably slag me off for this in comments. I thought that you guys only had roll-on deodorant. I don't know where she's getting these from. <laughs> I don't know where she's pulling these from. I use roll-on deodorant. I'm a big advocate of roll-on deodorant. It is the superior form of deodorant. But I don't know where she's getting this from. <laughs> don't you literally, you're literally famous for having that axe spray. That axe spray. I thought you didn't have spray on deodorant. Because in movies, people always roll on their deodorant. You know, in the changing rooms and stuff. I know you have Old Spice and stuff like that, but I, for some reason, I've had it in my head that Don't know in where America, she's pulling this one from, honestly. Spray-on deodorant didn't exist. And I was always like, wow, they should really get spray-on deodorant. I guess they don't use it in films because it goes and it would make a noise, whereas like, a you just do the roll-on if you're like shooting a TV scene. And you don't have to have the I'm I'm like doubting all of her opinions here which i don't mean to do because she's gone to the effort to make a video let me give you one that i would presume about america i would presume that all your food portions are way bigger than ours i don't know if that would be unrealistic to say but I, i'm pretty sure like our medium and your medium wouldn't be the same our large and your large wouldn't be the same even if you eat from an american chain that's in england you tend to get more food than you would from like an english chain that would be my presumption that would be one of the the lies, I don't know if it is a lie, that I would put in this video. But yeah, I don't know. That, maybe that's Let just... Let me know if I'm if right or wrong Europe, down below. Did you know that spray on deodorant is yes. in America? Yes, I, I did. The next misconception that Europeans have about America is that you're all really rich. And I get... Again, I would not have this presumption. My presumption would be that your average house is bigger than our average house, but there's no country where everyone is rich, right? Come on now, come on. Why this misconception exists, <laughs> to be fair, your houses and the land that your houses are on are generally a lot I get that. than what we have in Europe for middle class people. Additionally, many people in America live on credit, so a lot of people are living above their means to what they- Your wages always sound higher than ours, so when I see these like Instagram um, reels or YouTube shorts or whatever, and it's like, how much do you earn? How much do you spend in your apartment? People like just throwing around the figure, I earn $120,000 a year and that, like it's nothing, and then say that they got no money and that their apartment's rubbish, but I think it's just because dollars, a hundred thousand dollars is less than a hundred thousand pound, right? So that num that already messes with your mind a bit, and I guess it's more expensive in America. So I kind of get where she's coming from, also, they also with this actually. Them. And the thing about credit in America is you are encouraged to use credit, like a lot of things you can't get until you build up credit, which is exists. In That's Europe, the same but in England, though. Isn't so much focused on. Okay. Like, there are other ways Fair to enough. build up your trust with banks. And as I've mentioned before, I've never seen poverty quite like... To buy a car or a house, you need credit. In Europe, of course, there are homeless people, but not in the same way that they are in America. It really shocked me. Because I went over expecting, as I said, pretty much everybody to be super rich. And then I saw people looking like Oliver Twist on the street, and that was a surprise to me. Additionally, some things in America are a lot cheaper than they are where I come from in Ireland. Ireland has just been named alongside Denmark as the most expensive country in Europe for the cost of living. The prices of goods and services in Ireland are on average 40% higher than they are anywhere else Whoa. in the EU. And then when I went to America, it was like things were more expensive in some areas, but cheaper in other areas. So I was surprised because I thought everything would be the same, if not more expensive when I went there. The okay. next lie that we are told about America. And I'm more surprised about the island facts than anything else in this video. <laughs> This should come as no surprise, and I don't want to get bogged down in the discussion too much, but it's that everybody there has pew-pews. I'm guessing she means guns. Maybe you're not allowed to say guns on YouTube, I don't know. Maybe that's why she's saying pew-pews. But we've said guns twice already, so we'll keep on saying it. Um, if I was to guess, I reckon over 50% of people have guns. What, what figure would I put in it? I'd say 66%. I reckon two-thirds of... Households, maybe not people, households have a gun in the house. I don't know 
if that statistic's way off or it's close, I guess it changes from region to region. Um, but I, I would assume the, the majority of people have access to a gun. So maybe I'm on the maybe I'm on board with this one. Let's see what she says. And they don't. Not everybody does. In fact, it's a very divided country on people's opinions about that. But people have very strong opinions about that. And I'm going to swiftly move on. I just thought that every single person would have one when I went there, and that's not the case. The next lie that Europeans are told about America is that pretty much teenagers run America. If if media was to be believed and movies and. I don't know, but they run England. My God, these uh, teenagers cause chaos and they get away with it. They can't arrest them. They can't do nothing to them. You can't touch them. You can't hit them. What are you meant to do? They're just running riot here in England. The teenagers, teenagers are frightening, man. America revolves around teenagers. I don't know what she means by this one. TV shows. In actual fact, I have still not seen a cheerleader when I've gone to America. I have never been invited to a prom or homecoming, and that seems like an integral part of your society from film and TV. So, yeah, I know movies and TV shows aren't real, but I definitely thought that teenagers would have a more central role in America as a result of watching so many of them. I guess you need to be in a, in a school to see that. Maybe she's a teacher. I don't know. I don't know what, where, where she was expecting to see these teenagers or get invited to what prom. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. The next one that we are told about America is that you... You do see a lot of cheerleaders and like jocks in films. I get that though. You do, to be fair. It does seem like they're, they're in everything. <laughs> but again, <laughs> I could just imagine going to America and there's a hundred cheerleaders walking down the street or something. Fast food, here we go. This is probably going to be the one I said. You guys eat fast food constantly. And that actually could not be further from the truth. Americans, more so than anywhere else in the world, love to cook. Okay. Americans love to buy. I would have assumed you eat more fast food than anyone. Yeah, I would have agreed with that barbecue. lie. Barbecue, it's like your thing. You're like my grill, my barbecue, you're mad for cooking. There is fast food on every corner in America. So that's where the perception comes from. It's a lot easier to get your hands on. But most Americans don't eat fast food every single day. You cook for the most part. I definitely thought Americans just ate TV dinners and fast food constantly. And cooking was like something you did at were TV dinners ever a thing? Now, I used to always see that in American cartoons where they sit and they have like a tray and it's all like divvied up, like portioned up. Like you've got like your little bit of vegetables here, your meat here, maybe some like potatoes here. And then it's like, it's like deep. They've just like put it in the microwave and come out. Was that actually a thing in America? Because I used to always think that's weird. <laughs> the next lie that we were told about America is that your breakfasts are crazy. Like you eat waffles and pancakes and cereal every single morning. You have a full feast for breakfast. They always do that in American TV shows. My wife and kids, I remember, they'd have pancakes, they'd have eggs and bacon, and it'd be a big stack like this. I'm like, how much time do you have in the morning? How do you have time to eat all this before you go to school or work? It was a rush in our household. Um, but... I imagine most people just grab a piece of toast, bowl of cereal. You're normal people, right? <laughs> Every day. So yay! Enjoy smelling yeah, breakfast. That. In fact, I think most Americans probably live on just the same kinds of breakfast as most of us Europeans do. Of course, we have Irish breakfast. You have American breakfast, which consists of waffles and pancakes. But you can't be an English kids. breakfast. But mostly, I think our general day breakfasts cross over. You might have a bowl of porridge, a bowl of cereal, a slice of toast, a bit of coffee. I definitely thought it was like America-themed breakfast every single day, whereas that's not really sustainable and you would be carrying a lot of extra weight if you ate that every single day. I would love to have American breakfast every single day, but it's not a good idea. I love American breakfast also. Pancakes and bacon. I remember the first time I was, I was going to try it. I was like, this isn't going to work. Pancakes and bacon and maple syrup. Bacon shouldn't be going with anything sweet. We don't eat bacon with sweet stuff. And I tried that and I was in love immediately. <laughs> Although the same could be said for Irish breakfast. Banging. Chicken and waffles, another one. Banging. Banging. To be honest, after I have an Irish breakfast, it's delicious, but it slows me down. I'm like very... I like to have a little nap after an Irish breakfast. Have you eat a bit cheap breakfast? The next time we're told about America, and there's truth in this one, but not as much as I had thought, it's that you all go around suing each other constantly. America is... Um... I, I, I get her where she's coming from with that. I, would, I wouldn't think that everyone's going around suing everyone constantly, but I think it's easier to sue someone in America for something stupid. You know what I mean? Like, weren't there the story of, like, there was a woman driving around with a coffee from McDonald's and she spilled it on herself and it burnt her? 
and she was able to sue him because it doesn't say warning hot drink or something or like a guy who ate peanuts and he had a, he was allergic to pe he was allergic to nuts so he was able to sue the company because it didn't say may contain nuts like we hear these stories so I get where she's coming from with this one I never knew if they were true or not but you know there it's we go an extremely litigious country but I think that's also due to the proportion of people compared to everywhere else in the world. Like, if there's more people somewhere, there's going to be more people suing people, right? But the impression that we are given of Americans is that if you bang your head on something, you're going to sue... Yeah, I would have that, that perception, actually, something. to be fair. Whereas the truth is, most times when something happens, people just let it go, unless there's, like, serious ramifications. I definitely did think people just went around suing each other. I don't think that this is not fueled by the urban myths that are created on the internet. For example, there's that urban myth about the woman in America who sued McDonald's because her coffee there we was go. too hot. Where is that an urban myth? Go and look that up. The truth is that woman was actually really badly injured oh, and that sorry. coffee was way hotter than it should have been. <laughs> but people like these extravagant headlines and it makes Europeans think that Americans do just go around being like, you're sued, you're sued, you're sued. And also I thought that every American just had a lawyer on standby because when you see things again people go well, call my lawyer most people don't just have a lawyer to call you generally have to research that let me know below in comments if you want to see the other way around version okay if she did the other way around version we might react to that at some point as well i didn't mean to like this a video at any point she she made a good video here. it was entertaining just some of them were kind of like childish you know what i mean like the the celebrities one um they're not seeing cheerleaders, stuff like that. that. Those ones were a bit like, come on, Nam. Did you really expect to see that? Did you really? Or are you just putting it in there to make the video a bit longer? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? That's what YouTubers have to do, though. You have got to do what you've got to do. The game is the game, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you do like the video. Subscribe to the channel. We did take a little bit of a break, but we are going to be back in full flow now. And I will see you for the next one. Take it easy. Peace.